I'm here with Ted Kramer, who is the CEO and president of HKW based in Indianapolis. Ted, it is awesome to have you on the podcast and vlog. And I'm going to start off and ask you, what is that picture behind you? Uh, That picture behind me is a gift from the firm when I turned 50 years old uh, last October. It is another life of mine when I played uh, hockey uh, in the LA King system in Phoenix, Arizona, that uh, my player's card blown up with all the firm signatures on it, wishing me a happy 50th birthday. (laughs) <laughs> That's so I, awesome. The nail How, was hanging out of the wall and I hung it up there not knowing it would be right behind me. Uh, so during so Zoom calls, we have some gaps to fill in. Um, how did you go from playing hockey with the LA Kings to now running HKW? Let's, let's rewind a little bit. <laughs> and actually, yeah, where, good, where are you uh, from? Yeah, it's a good, uh, it's a good, good question. So I uh, uh, originally from Finley, Ohio, a uh, small town in uh, Northwest Ohio. Started to play hockey when I was four. Also played golf. Uh, it's a long story. Made short. Went to play hockey at the University of Michigan uh, from 1988 to 1992. And then was drafted by the LA Kings. Went to camp with all the, the superstars, Wayne Gretzky, others back then, and ultimately played in Phoenix on their top minor league team. And uh, it was a fascinating experience. Uh, as I've said in other interviews, uh, I think sports at any level teaches you so many things about yourself and group dynamics and and how to, um, how to grow as a person and uh, as a business professional. So when did you leave sports and kind of move on to the next stage of your career? I think I'm always involved in sports. I view private equity as a sport, to be honest. It's a mindset where uh, there's, a, there's an obvious score on the scoreboard, meaning returns and, and things like that. And how can you uh, develop the right team and teamwork and culture that allows your team to produce in a way that allows you to keep uh, executing? Uh, and raising capital. Okay, so I guess maybe that makes me wonder, like, when you look at a team, like a hockey team, there's a defined set of people, and they're playing their positions. How do right. you look at constructing the team for the firm? Like, yeah, from HKW's positions? perspective, we use this. We use the term four pillars. So if you think of the four pillars, they're different positions on a hockey team. So uh, the first pillar is sourcing or deal origination. I think the skill set that's needed to be an expert and a professional in the sourcing is probably a little bit different than the second pillar, which is transactional related. Uh, deal professionals that pick and choose which companies, what price that or value we should pay for them and ultimately close on. Uh, that's certainly a different position than being out in the business development world externally for a living. Uh, the third pillar is our operational team, the portfolio company operational team where many of the partners in that are chairman of our companies and they know how to run, been there, done that, if you will, with the entrepreneurial based companies that we partner with. Just certainly another skill, different skill set. And then our fourth pillar is exits. We have a partner, Caroline Young, who manages a lot of the exits uh, for our companies in a real proactive manner. So instead of having one player try to be an expert in all four, we try to specialize like a, like a forward versus a defenseman versus a goalie, we try to specialize those professionals in the different buckets that they, or different pillars that they uh, spend their life here at HKW uh, performing. It's real simple. You know, someone told me earlier, you know, it's always better to play to your strengths than to play to something that you really love, but you may just be proficient in. Uh, proficiency may not get you to where your ultimate goal is. So what I took that. are some of like your best, like your biggest strengths? What are my biggest strengths? Yeah. Oh, I, th- I, think, I think most people in this industry have similar strengths. I would say uh, tenacity, tenaciousness, hustling, being able to read people, uh, don't panic, have fun. There's always a sense of humor. Um, a lot of the soft skills that you may not learn necessarily in business school, I think, is where the private equity industry, to me, is a people business. Uh, more than it is anything else, whether it's investors that you're developing authentic relationships with. Certainly within the sourcing intermediary referral sources, it's all about trust and integrity and building authentic relationships with people to keep you top of mind. When we're meeting with management teams, it's so important that you can bond with, with the manager and the owners that you're, you know, that you're interacting with to become partners. Certainly price and mechanics and other things are very important, but at the end of the day, that's a very much a people person decision. You know, when you're operating these companies, if things aren't going well or they're going really well, 
you know, um, you still at the end of the day have to be able to get on the boat together and maintain that partnership. And then when the relationship ends, you know, when we need to look to ab- uh, exit or, or divest our, you know, our partnership, it's a people, people discussion and, you know, unwinding of, of certain things as a partnership. So I view this as very much a people business. And I think as the industry has evolved and more and more firms have deal sourcing professionals, I think, you know, you realize that marketing and branding and relationships genuinely really matter uh, to get what I term the benefit of the doubt. You know, if, if you and I are competing for a transaction, A, we may not know it at the time, obviously, but B, how do you get that benefit of the doubt, all things else equal? And I think there's a real large human component, whether it's the owner, the investment bank, or intermediary, that can allow one firmer, you know, to win that opportunity over somebody else. You've been doing this since 2001. What is it about this particular function, this particular role, this particular industry on why you do it? I guess the first thing that came to my mind is I like to win, and I like to win with the people that are part of HKW. And and those that are coming to HKW, whenever that may be. I think just the, the competition and the athletic spirit that the private equity industry allows for is exciting for me. As exciting as just watching the number of entrepreneurs around North America and all the people that they hire and all the growth of business and, and things like that that they, that they do is really neat. And times it's fascinating to see how businesses are very successful doing some just real simple things right hiring the right people, doing what they say they're going to do and executing real efficiently. You know, a lot of times you don't need to make business as hard as some people try to make it. And it's fun to see uh, the simplicity of success uh, for a lot of business owners. Where does that competitiveness come from? Like, what was it like growing up? Did you have brothers and you just all competed from on everything? Or like, where does it come from? I think there's just always been a drive to compete and to win. As a child and being in sports, work harder and maximize your potential. I think as I viewed it as is really trying to be the best you could be and see how far you could go, whether or not that was at the best level, the second best level, the third best level, but at least the competition personally to try to become as good as God's blessed you with talent. It was really important for me as a young child and still is. I don't want to lay awake at night. I say it this way. I say it to my son and my daughter, you don't want to lay awake at night wondering what if, or maybe I should have tried that. I'd rather lay in bed and say I tried and I failed. And it's okay because we'll just keep trying. And it's just how my parents and how I'm wired. But that's, you know, that's the competitive drive. Back in 2014, when you transitioned from doing 12 years in the sourcing role to running HKW, what was that transition like? And were there people that kind of guided or assisted with kind of making that move from sourcing role to, to running the firm? Yeah, I think it speaks to just the culture and the heritage of HKW, the, the prior leaders, Glenn Skolnick and Jeff Wood. We have, we have processes in place for the senior partners and leaders to transition out of the firm at a particular age within the firm. So the culture of our firm, I can't speak to enough that the transition and evolution was really not I felt pushed me forward to lead the firm. Personally, I was humbled, honored, excited, absolutely nervous, confident. All the feelings one would get or I would get before playing, you know, my first pro game or my first college game or a Final Four game and NCAAs, you know, you've got all that stuff going on. And, you know, you're really just trying to, as I alluded to earlier, play to the firm's strengths, but also evolve as all firms need to evolve and trying to figure out what are the correct uh, points, evolution points to, to begin to modify the firm. My partners have been tremendously supportive. I don't, you know, I feel we're all partners. We're all heading in the same direction. There's three or four decisions in a calendar year that I have to make independently of, of the partners. But other than that, I view us as really kind of full steam ahead. When you look at your whole career and you know, maybe an earlier mistake that set you up for a future success or things that just really helped you grow as an individual? I think everyone has mistakes. Again, I come from the side that at the end of the day, my win-loss record is probably going to be a heck of a lot more losses than wins. I truly feel I only need a few wins to to create a legacy personally and professionally. 
So there's just that mindset I have. So when I look at mistakes, I'm glad I didn't make that mistake. I think everybody who sources for a living realizes that they may miss plane flights the way schedules work, or they really don't want to take that last meeting. Or I told, I told a person I'd meet him at the lobby at ACG for 15 minutes, but eh, I got to walk across the hotel. And, you know, the few times I've, I've felt like doing that, I've forced myself to go. And it's wild that I have three platforms that we close by taking those meetings or forcing you to, to follow through on a commitment you've made for folks that you may just have met or what have you. That's actually how I got my job in banking. I was in Shanghai and I didn't want to go out. I was like tired of like, you know what? Just, just do this. Like you never know what can happen. And I met the person who got me the job in investment right. banking. <laughs> yeah. It's, so it's, it's uh, so what does that say? I think for me, it says everybody may do 80 to 98% of everything, but it's the extra 2% that can really separate people apart in their personal and professional career. I do think the harder you work and the more tenacious you are, the better is the results. I'm not one that rests on my own laurels. I don't feel others should either. Are there things in your life that you've kind of recently picked up or even within private equity and the way that you work with the team, the portfolio companies, the LPs of that's like, how are you pushing your boundaries as opposed to, you know, now you're at the stage where in the firm since 2014, are you just kind of rinsing and repeating or are you, how are you growing? Yeah, I think, I think, I guess this is a big hockey and, and even golf. You know, I've, I've been wired to, and I believe it, you're only as good as your last hockey shift. So if you had, if your last hockey shift, whether it's high school, college, pro, wherever, isn't that good, then maybe you don't get to go back on the ice or, you know, so I, I view that we're only as good as our last investor meeting, our last investment banking meeting, our last investment. And that's how I think you can continue to evolve and push yourself as the leader, but also uh, evolve your team into realizing that change is just normal and the evolution. It's not masterful change all over the place, but just the slightly every day try to try to get better and improve. I think our team knows what our goals are. We've identified, you know, concretely we have. I think the evolution has been there's a little more metrics around what we're trying to accomplish that are measurable in all four pillars. So we have more concrete ways of trying to get there, measuring ourselves. How do you structure your days and your weeks? Because it seems like because of the sports background, there was such a regimented schedule that led to your success and the discipline. So I'm curious to know, like, what, like, how do you, how do you approach your days? I mean, no, it's a little bit <laughs> different Under <now>. the virus? <laughs> <laughs> But generally speaking, do you have kind of like habits and routines that have really contributed to you being able to do what you do day in and day yeah, out? Yeah, I think everybody has them, whether they're conscious of it or not. But for me, sure, I like to get up and work out early just to wake up and get the kinks out and, and just sweat and, and get ready. Uh, on the road, typically – to the Tuesday to Thursday before uh, the crisis has started. So travel around and do meetings and, and maintain investor and investment banking meetings. Always uh, coming back typically Thursday night. Friday is typically a quiet admin kind of a day or uh, reconnecting with the family and things like that. But yeah, my routines are, I think everyone has, has superstitions to a certain extent, but it's uh you know, you get on that treadmill and you just keep going. But I, I, I don't, uh, I don't stay out late. I don't. I try to exercise the stress off. Uh, and the coronavirus has been a little different. It's certainly been an evolution for many of us. Uh, wake up at six, work out, go get coffee, either come to the office or go to my home office at home and work till pretty much on calls or what have you until two or three and. And then uh, we'll hang out with the kids or go outside and find an activity to do and, and then work into the evening or watch a movie and repeat Groundhog Day the next, uh, the next morning. <laughs> um, that kind of makes me think about, you know, with this whole quarantine and, and coronavirus situation about how I, I didn't really have any white space in my life. And this kind of forced me to, I mean, it's a little more difficult with young kids, but it, it did actually create an opportunity to have some white space to think strategically. And I was wondering, like, 
what's, what's that balance between you thinking strategically about business and life versus tactically and just executing day in and day out? Like, are there certain times when you have your, your long weekend and it's don't talk to Ted weekend, I'm turning off my phone or like, how do you, how do you create white space in your life? Uh, how do I create white space? I think in the morning working out is one area. I'm pretty uh, adamant about that. Uh, I golf a lot. That's been therapeutic. Uh, thankfully, Indiana has allowed courses to stay open, at least in the county that I'm in. So that's been uh, therapeutic uh, for me to do that. Um, in the normal course of life, uh, you may chuckle, but it was airplanes. Most road warriors out there, you know, I, yeah. I miss my Delta 4C seat, as I tell my friends that it's not, uh, you know, you miss the family, but it's, it's, if you're on an airplane as much as I am, there's some sanctuary to just sitting with your headphones on and contemplating life, whether it's personal or, 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 or the firm, but it's, it is what my life has, has become from a, from a traveling perspective. Do you, um, do you have a chance to read it all? I skim, I mean, not, I skim not. very well. <laughs> no, I, I'm actually probably reading more now during the virus at nights. Um, non-business related stuff than uh, you know than I had historically. Um, okay. But is I there think a particular all, book yeah. that in your life has had a, a big impact on you? Yeah, just books on you know. I, I guess the most book the book I've read most recently twice has been Sh- uh, Stephen Schwartzman's book. You know, on the way he and his his partner built Blackstone. Um, I don't view HKW ever becoming Blackstone, but there's just so many. Uh, great pieces of wisdom and advice for anybody in any type of business. You know, that's just some tenants in there that I'm sure all of us will try to use personally and professionally. Anyone that kind of stuck out in particular? Yeah, I think there's a few. One is just the doggedness and the hard effort and the tenaciousness that it takes. If you're going to dream, dream big is a theme in there. He doesn't say it, but it's instead of why, why not? You know? Um, And then lastly, just the, his ability to only have what he would term a players around him. You know, those are some kernels that are constantly in our industry. And, um, and it was just a good book. There's some good stories in there. That's interesting. The, uh, the why not kind of reminds me of uh, Atlas shrugged and there was a passage in there. Makes it pass. It makes it sound like a Bible. Um, but there's a part in there when it's talking about like, who's going to let you build this. And the person says like, who's going to stop me. And it's like this, why not? Why can't I just pursue that? Have there been any of those, those particular moments in, in your life of, you know, going down a particular path and you're like, no, you know, like I am going to do this. Oh yeah. I think, uh, I guess, you know, from an athletic perspective is, uh, yeah, I'm going to play pro hockey. Really? You're from Ohio. It's a non-hockey area. It's this, it's that. And I just said, well, why can't I? I mean, it was just, you know, and it's probably, that probably ingrained some of the burn or, you know, some of the, the fire, the competitiveness to prove people wrong. If you watch the Jordan series, he was always looking for a, a way to get mad at someone on the other team. So it would add the, the fuel to his fire to, to compete. But That's that would be, yeah. What is, um, maybe kind of a, a final question with this, like what sure. is the next version of you look like if, if there was a not an incremental version of you what would be like the exponential next step uh it's a good question i don't know i mean i think it's uh you know i think you know break it down you know personally um to watch my kids grow up to be to sit back and just watch them excel and and spread their wings knowing you had something to do with it um, but not taking their the thunder or uh, the next step professionally would to be uh, to grow the firm with my current partners and allow a, a lasting legacy to be created for the next generation to take over. However, that environment, how that environment looks. And for me per- personally, to have the ability to uh, finally relax, genuinely relax and wear flip flops and, uh, be somewhere in the sun. How long could Real you last simple. that way? Because <laughs> huh? you seem like you have this personality of like just very have to, having to be driving towards something. Yeah, yeah. I used to say you go in my like 20s, I wanted days. to retire. 
when I was in my early 20s, I wanted to retire at 50, and now I'm 50, and I feel like I'm just getting started. You know, it's, uh, it's life as it unfolds, as you learn. And What did you wish you knew at, like, what advice would you give yourself, the 25-year-old version of yourself who was going down, or maybe the, you know, however old you were when you were really getting started in this path? Yeah, I think the, I think the advice I would have for, for myself and other young professionals is be patient. Be patient and find a good mentor and walk down versus run down the hill. I think, especially in this industry, there's still such an art to it. Um, and there's a science to it. But, but all the young professionals coming out with their great grades and their great schools and their great experiences um, doesn't mean you're going to be great at, at, in the people business. And if you believe private equity is in the people business, um, learning the apprenticeship of how to to learn that against the different uh, constituents that we all have to interact with is probably better to go slow than fast. There we go. <laughs> this has been awesome. I appreciate the time. I with hope this. so. I don't know. I thought like I was rambling a little bit, but I appreciate, <laughs> appreciate sure. interest in us.